Hey there! Today we are going to be making an Easter egg on paper. So parents, here are some supplies that you need to go grab for yourself and the kiddos. This would be a great, fun family project. Um, I'm going to be using watercolor paper, but any thicker type paper, cardstock, construction paper, um, even cardboard would be super awesome, will work. Uh, the bigger the better. I think it would be super fun to make this really big. Um, and then, of course, you need something to draw with, preferably pencil. That way, if you have any oopsies, you can erase. Um, I will be using Sharpie to draw so you can see what I'm doing. You may want a Sharpie to trace your pencil lines. I will be using oil pastels today, but crayon works as well. And then I'm going to be using some of the watercolor paints by mixing that we made, remember, by mixing the water and the markers. That's in a previous video. You can go back and watch. Um, but you could use watercolors from the tray or why not use tempera or acrylics? That would work as well. Um, and then, of course, you need a painting surface that maybe is covered so we don't have any ruining of the tables. Uh, use some newspaper or plastic tablecloth, something like that. Um, you need a water cup for cleaning your brushes out. And, of course, brushes. The bigger you are painting on, the bigger brush you'll want. And napkins for drawing your brush. I think that's everything. I know that's a big check sheet. So hit pause, go gather your supplies, and come back and join me. All right, first thing I am going to do is I'm going to draw a very large egg shape. Now, an egg shape is sort of like an oval, but it's skinnier on the top. So instead of being an oval, it's Hmm, <laughs> a little skinnier on the top side, right? Okay, um, so draw with pencil that way. If you mess up, you can erase. I am going to start clear at the very top of my paper and work all the way to the bottom of my paper. And like I was saying, the bigger your painting surface, the better. You could even do this on a canvas if you have one. Okay, so I am going to draw, goes down, makes like a big U-ish at the bottom and then comes back up skinny at the top. Okay, not exactly perfect. I could go back and clean this up a little and in fact, I think I will because, there we go, because I'm gonna be cutting this egg out. So this little oopsie line over here won't matter anyway. Remember when you're creating artwork, just take a deep breath. <sighs> Remind your kids, um, the process is the process. How we get there is going to be different for everybody, but the end result is going to be beautiful because everybody's artwork is going to be different, and that's good. There's not a certain way to get to that end result that is the right way or the wrong way. So, again, if we have little oopsies or wrongs, that's okay. We can get rid of them. That's the awesome thing about art. Now, I am going to take a, um, well, I guess I better continue a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to divide my egg up into sections using some of the different lines that there are. So, of course, i got to throw in an element of design. We're going to make a curved line. And then how about a zigzag? And then how about a wavy, like that? And then how about a, hmm, I am going to make a bunch of diagonals that gets me across. And then I'm gonna make some curves to get me across. So I'm trying to divide my, uh, paper up into different sections. We also have vertical, horizontal, um, we did wavy, zigzag, uh, diagonal, like that, or diagonal, um, and then we have wavy, zigzag, curve, and oh, dotted, you could do dotted lines, you could do 
dashed lines. And then my most favorite is a spiral, which is like a circle that keeps getting bigger. Now, once we've divided our egg up into sections, now's the time that you're going to get out your oil pastels or your crayons. And we are going to trace those lines that we just made. So um, if your kiddos were really wanting to use Sharpie at this point, they don't necessarily need to because we're going to trace all of these lines with oil pastel and the oil pastel will just wind up covering up your Sharpie line. Um, and make sure it's a nice, nice, nice thick outline, okay? So um, how about some purple? Nice, thick, nice, thick, thick, thick line with crayon or oil pastel and make sure that you're pushing really hard so that it shows up really nicely. How about some green? Nice and thick. Thick. There we go. And how about some yellow? And this is my yellowy orange. Just because yellow might not show up super well for you guys out there in digital land, but. Um, so the, the yellowy orange will show up better. And then how about some red? Okay. There we go. And then you got to think about what color do you want to use on the outline of the egg? Um, let's see. I haven't used black. You could use white. That could even be cool. You could use like a dark, dark purple. Whatever floats your boat. If you use black, be very careful not to rub your hand through any of this. Oil pastels can be super smudgy if you're not careful. There. Okay, so we got a nice bold outline, right? And remember, we're going to be cutting this out. Well, you don't have to cut it out. You could paint your background. Um, but that's why I'm not doing anything in the background. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now I can be uh, actually, you know, why not add just a few more lines and designs for fun, right? Why not? So with my turquoise I'm gonna add a few more curves with my purple I'm gonna add a few more zigzags so this parents is a great project for those of you that maybe don't love to dye Easter eggs because it's so messy this is kind of like decorating it Easter eggs right they could make a whole bunch of these um so that's that's an idea of course you don't have to but um, maybe on this one, I make a couple uh, circles. There we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe on this one, I make my zigzag or my diagonals go the other way because diagonals can go different directions. Knowing line names is actually an element of design that is on the state standards of what kiddos need to know. So yes, parents' lines have names, not just straight or crazy. <laughs> they each have their own names. Um, okay, curved. Maybe we do the curve lines again.
There we go. And, oh, my favorite, my favorite. Maybe I'll do some spirals. And again, use those muscles. Okay, use, use, use your muscles. That way they show up even better. Okay, now we have a super decorated egg, right? And of course you can do more if you want to. Don't have to, but you can. And now I have my paintbrush. Anytime you're painting, you wanna hold your brush right where the metal and the handle touches, okay? And um, the nice thing about these watercolors that I made is they're already wet, so you don't have to get them wet. Um, so I'm gonna dip into my blue paint because I don't have a turquoise one and get in the blue. Ooh, that's nice and bold. Okay. And then I'll clean my brush off so you rub gently on the bottom of the cup. Wipe on the inside. Do not tap because if you tap, it will splash water everywhere. Parents, you will have to remind your kiddos of this over and over and over again. The nice thing about the oil pastels is they kind of serve as a wall on your paper. It's like this little microscopic wall that keeps the colors from getting mixed together because a lot of times when you paint one watercolor next to, right next to another wet watercolor, they will like bleed together. They'll mix together. So having the oil pastel barrier helps that. Now I could have, instead of using the same color on top, I could have used a different color on top of the oil pastel and the oil pastel would have pushed through any color you put on it and it still shows because the oil resists the watercolor it pushes away the watercolor paint um, because it's waxy right um, so that's a kind of a cool thing that you could do too if you whoop, don't get crazy like i just did if you wanted oh my goodness okay come on now Dab that out a little. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could use a totally different color. Like I could use, you know, yellow on top of my green, um, orange on top of my purple, uh, blue on top of my red, you know, so you could have fun mixing up the colors. You don't need to make your colors match. And in fact, the oil pastel would show up better actually if you did use different colors on top. Okay. Now my yellow that I have is like neon because I accidentally put a laser lemon in there when I was making my own watercolors. That is okay. There we go. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, depending on how thick your paper is, you are not going to want to put a lot of liquid on top. If your paper is kind of thin, even like construction paper, you're going to want to keep your layers um, kind of light. Like don't put a lot of liquid on the paper or it will get real wrinkly and kind of bubble up on you. If that happens after it dries, just lay a heavy book on top. Let it be for a couple of days and it'll flatten it right back out. Okay, now um, I can put red on top of here, but what I have to be careful of is this yellow is still wet and there's no like line keeping the red and the yellow from mixing. There's no oil pastel line, so I have to be really careful right there. Okay, um, otherwise the colors will bleed together. So why don't I start down here give these colors a little bit of time to dry. It'll give that red down here a little bit of time to dry so that when I go to paint the orange down there at the bottom, oop, oh my, oh my. It's because my paper's up and down. You guys' paper will be flat, so that probably won't happen. Where they just all drip down like that a second ago. Okay, be very careful where the two colors meet or they will mix. 
which I think it looks cool when watercolors mix like that, but if you don't want them to do that, then it's very frustrating. Okay. And my last one is my orange. Do some orange. I'll start at the bottom of the section, just like this. And then I will work my way up towards the red and just be very careful so they don't bleed together. Okay, so now I have this vibrant, beautiful egg all painted in. So next I can take this Okay, so like I said earlier, you could paint your background if you wanted to and then hang the whole piece of art as like a decoration or you can take a pair of scissors and cut out your egg very carefully. Now parents, um, it's, I know this is silly, but little ones have a hard time holding their scissors correctly. So remind them, turn this way, remind them that their uh, thumb goes in the circle their fingers go in the bigger part, however many fingers fit comfortably, and then uh, they keep their thumb on top. For some reason, a lot of kids try to flip their hand upside down and cut with their fingers on top, but they need to turn their wrist and keep their thumbs on top. They're gonna cut right along the edge, and I know it makes you really nervous to let them cut, but honestly, the more cutting practice they get, the better. And my second suggestion is to let this painting dry before they cut it out. That way they don't accidentally mess up their painting by turning the paper like this. See how I keep touching different parts of the egg. If they actually will just pause for a little bit and let their paper dry first before they cut it out, they're gonna be a lot more successful. Plus, if their paper is wet where they're cutting, they'll wind up just tearing their paper instead of cutting it because wet paper is tricky to cut. So now we have this very cute, fun egg, and I've seen some posts on social media that I thought were very clever about putting the egg in their window that faces the street. So if you happen to be out on a walk with your kiddos, um, say on Easter or around Easter, they'll see these eggs up in the window and it's like they're going on an egg hunt. So kind of like the bear hunt post that we've been seeing and we have a video for creating your own teddy bear for your window as well. But I thought this would be really fun to put up in the window. That's why I was suggesting the bigger the better. So if they did it on a big piece of cardboard maybe, or poster board that they have left over from a project or cardboard from something that came in the mail, um, then this could be really fun to do on that and put up in the window. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this project. I cannot wait to see your egg posted in your window so we can go on an egg hunt. And um, I can't wait to do some more art with you. Have a great day.